This is a talk on the value of immigration. And here we're at Text Boston. You know, I'm, you're probably thinking I'm preaching to the choir, right? And here's the problem, right? We are losing the debate on immigration. For a growing share of Americans, this is the most important problem. And arguably, this is the most animating issue for Republicans in the 2016 election. And it's for a very clear set of reasons. People feel directly that immigration is going to impact them personally in the form of higher taxes, more crime, fewer jobs. And if you feel these things, it's very hard to persuade you that this is a positive force. Combined with a narrative of invasion, of usurping our values, of changing who we are through immigration. And that has real policy consequences, both in Democratic and Republican administrations. And you might think, oh, okay, well, that's politics, right? But surely, business sector, the lords and ladies of high finance understand the contribution that all of these immigrants from, say, the Americas are bringing to the U.S., the contribution that Latinos are making to small business growth, for example. And sadly, you'd be tragically wrong. Less than 1% of VC is going to Latino entrepreneurs. Similar stats for black entrepreneurs, right? And at the same time, other countries are not standing still. Canada has replaced the U.S as the number one destination for immigrants, according to BCG, US News and World Reports, Canadians. And Japan is reversing its policies, Europe's reversing its policies. Countries are seeking to attract immigrant talent um, very aggressively. So I'm here to convince you, or maybe that uncle that you, uh, that you argue with on Facebook, <laughs> of a different narrative on immigration. And why a different story? In these times, we're doing a lot of having legalistic, moralistic arguments about immigration. But especially in a divided polity, what connects with people, what persuades people, are stories. So my story that I'm telling you here is about immigrant entrepreneurship, America's secret weapon in an increasingly competitive world. So I went to Google, and I looked up Central American immigrant. And these are the first 10 pictures that you see if you do that. And look, I'm not telling you that that's not true, right? That these aren't real images. And they paint a picture of tragedy, of crisis, right? But I want to tell you a different story about Central American immigrants. That's me. I'm a Central American immigrant. And I make throwable omnidirectional cameras that keep first responders and civilians safer. Here's two other Central American immigrants. That's Rolando uh, and Samantha. They develop our antennas, our hardware, our applications. The dangers that we face are we're going into kind of the unknown. You've got somebody in a room, you don't know who it is, you don't know numbers, you don't know if they're armed, you don't know if there are innocents in that room. When you enter that structure, you have to read and react, figure out where the suspect could be hiding, and all that happens within seconds. I've got 42 years in law enforcement. I've learned that the real safety component for a police officer is knowing what they're going to get into before they get there. Police, open up! I mean, how do you do that? Well, this thing gives you that opportunity. So, Bounce Imaging. We create U.S. engineering and manufacturing jobs. We make tools that keep warfighters, civilians, and first responders safer, and we are more than 50% immigrant or foreign-born. Here's another Central American immigrant. This is Franklin Chang Diaz. Uh, you may know his daughter, because she's on the city council. And uh, he's a Central American immigrant, and he, one of the most decorated NASA astronauts. And he's building the rockets that are going to take us to Mars. Think how different the conversation would be if when you thought of Central American immigrants, you thought of throwable cameras and rockets to Mars, right? All right, so let's widen the lens. Who else are immigrants? You probably know Elon Musk is from South Africa. Sergey Brin, uh, his family fled the Soviet Union. Adi Tatarko founded House, a $4 billion startup in housing. Hamdi Ulukaya, uh, founder of Chobani, a Turkish immigrant and a vocal advocate for refugees. And if you forgot that Rihanna is an immigrant from Barbados, her Instagram is here to remind you otherwise. Beto Perez is from my mom's hometown of Cali, Colombia. He came to the U.S. undocumented, without speaking a word of English, and without a dollar to his name, and he founded the $500 million Zumba empire. And you'll notice that I've told you stories across race, across 
documented or undocumented, across refugee status, across religion, across region, right? Okay, nice stories. What does the data say? Turns out, 43% of Fortune 500 firms were founded by immigrants or their children, driving 12.8 million jobs and $5.3 trillion in revenue. Have that when someone tells you immigrants are here to destroy jobs. 25% of new businesses are founded by immigrants, double their share of the population. These are the 2016 Nobel Prize winners in science and economics. Can you circle which ones of them are immigrants? All of them. And so are 40% of Nobel Prize winners in the sciences in the US since 2000. Think of what it does to our scientific advantage to have minds from around the world. Also, you might remember this guy, refugee and immigrant. You guys had to show your vaccine cards to get in here. Did you get Pfizer, BioNTech, Moderna vaccine? All of them companies with immigrant founders. You might not be surprised that Wycliffe John is an immigrant from Haiti, given that his band was called the Fugees, right? But did you know that Dua Lipa, whose song is in your heads right this moment, don't lie, her name is actually uh, Love in Albanian, Kosovar Albanian immigrant, that's sweet. Bamba John, you've seen him in Black Panther, a good place. Did you know he was a DACA recipient? Probably not. But you might say, I've heard immigrants are going to bring crime. I've heard these horror stories of how immigrants are coming to, to, to uh, bring crime to America. It turns out, no! If you look at the data, immigrants commit fewer crimes than their peers. And notice, that is both across undocumented and documented. And this is from the Conservative Cato Institute, not some left-wing liberal think tank, right? Replicating studies from the University of Michigan and other places. I heard we can't afford immigrants in the US. Turns out, immigrant families contribute more than they take in benefits in tax revenue. And if you want to kill Social Security, the fastest way you can do it is by cutting off immigration, because you will flip the pyramid between workers and retirees immediately. I heard refugees and immigrants are threats to national security. And here we could go into like some really wonky discussion about like vetting procedures and how long it takes to get approved and the rates and whatever. Or you could say, what would national security be without famed refugee Enrico Fermi, who helped us beat the Nazis to the bomb, refugee secretary of state Madeleine Albright, or the 2.4 million veterans who are first or second generation immigrants. Why would immigrants have such an impact? It seems weird, right? And this was a puzzle in social science for a really long time. And it turns out that it's a question to do with self-selection. The kind of person that takes the risk to leave everything behind to come and make a better life is also the kind of person that's likely to take the jump into entrepreneurship. And this is a superpower for America. We're wonderful at taking these dreamers and giving them that opportunity. But tragically, we're eating kryptonite, right? This is really hard to find a picture of Superman eating kryptonite. <laughs> With attempts to cut legal immigration and a narrative of remaking the country and how this is a foreign uh, and unnatural thing. I think we can change that narrative. When people talk to you about the costs of immigration, you can talk about the opportunities for jobs and innovation that you saw earlier in this presentation. When people talk about the risks of immigration, you can talk about the risk of losing out on the next Elon Musk or Rihanna to Canada. Ugh. <laughs> and when people say they're not like us, you can say there is nothing more American than an entrepreneurial spirit. In a competitive world, China can draw on one billion minds, and that is scary. But with our superpower, we can draw from the best of the whole world. And I'll end on this quote, and I could pretend that like, this is some like Noam Chomsky quote, but we all know in the end that this has to be Ronald Reagan, right? This is a debate we have to, have to win. I think the inspiring story of immigrant entrepreneurship is one way we can do that. Thanks for your time.